For decades, Western powers, primarily the United States, have used the United Nations as a vehicle to intervene in African countries. This strategic use of the UN has been particularly visible in cases where the US sought international authorization for military measures, such as in Iraq, Libya, and Afghanistan. Overt military invasions, on the other hand, cannot be repeated indefinitely, demanding a different strategy. As a result, the notorious United Nations peacekeeping missions were established, which provided a handy excuse for deploying forces to nations under the flag of peacekeeping and security. Despite the humanitarian guise, these missions frequently hid ulterior aims, most notably acquiring access to strategically significant regions within resource-rich countries. In the context of Africa, this technique was especially noticeable in nations where France faced constraints in deploying its own troops and maintaining direct control. In such cases, United Nations peacekeeping forces were deployed, ostensibly to maintain peace and deter threats. These forces, however, remained entrenched in these areas for extended periods of time, and their activities frequently fell short of completely extinguishing insurgencies. Instead, their presence delayed confrontations and provided cover for the prolonged exploitation of important natural resources. The crucial decision was made by the President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo at the United Nations Summit in 2023. He ordered the departure of United Nations peacekeepers from his country, indicating a significant shift in the dynamics of international engagement in African issues. The pressing question is, what disclosures or worries prompted the Congolese president's daring decision, and what ramifications does it have for the future of international initiatives in Africa? It is critical to go into the complexities of this circumstance and unearth the larger narrative in order to really comprehend this revolutionary moment. The United Nations Summit in 2023 saw a huge and unprecedented shift in power dynamics, with African leaders emerging as active policymakers rather than passive policy acceptors. African states have historically been on the receiving end of international policies and decisions, particularly those influenced by Western powers. However, during this particular summit, these leaders opted to take advantage of the opportunity to express their views on a worldwide scale. In a rare moment of candor, Ghana's president declared the United Nations to be the most unjust organization. He drew a stark contrast between the United Nations' ostensible dedication to justice and democracy and the actual reality of its activities. This declaration was a forceful acknowledgement of many African nations' significant worries and grievances over their interactions with international institutions. In his address to the Assembly, President Felix Chisketi of the Democratic Republic of the Congo elevated this revolutionary moment to a new level. He delivered a forthright and firm directive to the United Nations peacekeeping soldiers stationed in his country. It was no coincidence that President Chisketi chose to make this declaration at the United Nations General Assembly. It conveyed the explicit message that African governments, including Congo, had decision-making authority over the presence of international peacekeeping forces within their borders. In essence, they are no longer need to obtain prior agreement or approval from the UN or any other external institution. President Chisketi's particular order asked for the prompt evacuation of the United Nations peacekeeping deployment known as MONESCO. The UN Organization Stabilization Mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo had been operational since 2010. It was founded as a replacement to a previous United Nations mission intended at resolving instability, notably in the country's eastern portion. This region has a lengthy history of conflict, with many armed groups competing for territory and important resources. However, in recent years, the UN has come under growing attention for what is believed to be a failure to appropriately safeguard civilians from violence, resulting in protests that tragically turned deadly. Several people have died as a result of these protests, raising concerns about the United Nations peacekeeping mission. President Shiza Kedi addressed his worries about this issue at the United Nations General Assembly, saying it is depressing to see peacekeeping teams deployed over the last 25 years struggle to confront insurgencies and violent conflicts successfully. In essence, he emphasized a basic issue because the primary goal of United Nations troops has traditionally not been the abolition of violent conflicts. Instead, they are frequently sent to specific countries with lucrative resources to exploit. 
This viewpoint is bolstered by allegations, substantiated by reports, that UN peacekeepers in Congo have been involved in human rights violations and gold smuggling. In view of these concerns and problems, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's president has taken immediate action. He has urged his country's government to hold talks with UN officials in order to speed the exit of MO and USCO, the UN peacekeeping force in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The pullout will be phased in, beginning in December 2023 and ending in December 2024. The Congolese people's recent actions and feelings demonstrate a resounding rejection of the deployment of United Nations forces within their country. Instead of providing the expected protection, these soldiers have been embroiled in the same dubious activities as the very armed rebel groups they were supposed to confront. It's a stinging indictment of the UN peacekeeping mission's efficacy in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Congolese people, who should have found relief in the presence of the United Nations, have instead become disillusioned by the peacekeepers' activities. Jean Mober Senga of Amnesty International captures the general sentiment of the Congolese people. People believe that if their government fails to protect their lives and maintain stability, the United Nations will intervene effectively. Unfortunately, trust in the UN's ability to carry out its mandate has dwindled over time. The United Nations has left individuals with the unmistakable impression that it is incapable of preventing or appropriately responding to violent incidents and wars. President Shiza Kadi's pledge to accelerate the withdrawal of United Nations peacekeeping personnel from the Democratic Republic of the Congo is part of a larger regional agenda. The East African community, a group of seven states, has just extended the mission of a regional military force stationed in the country's east. This expansion indicates a broader realization that alternative solutions are required to address the region's complex security concerns. The justification for Western participation in African states is based on the abundance of natural resources in these countries, which fuels Western powers' perception that they should impose control over these regions to guarantee access and influence. One concerning aspect of these peacekeeping deployments is the sad possibility that the peacekeepers themselves will exacerbate the difficulties they are supposed to remedy. Reports of sexual exploitation and other human rights violations involving peacekeepers have emerged, undermining the Western world's credibility. Instances of peacekeepers abusing their entire authority, frequently resulting to sexual exploitation, have sparked widespread alarm. Currently, the African continent hosts a significant number of troops, with over 50,000 engaging in UN peacekeeping operations and tens of thousands more in missions commanded by regional organizations. These operations are primarily located in countries afflicted by civil conflicts and insurgencies, posing a dual threat to civilian populations caught in the crossfire and to the broader stability of the surrounding regions. While many experts agree that peacekeeping missions serve an important role in protecting civilians and mitigating the greatest devastation caused by armed conflicts, they also agree that these missions deal with complex challenges that require immediate attention. Furthermore, the viability of civilian protection operations is called into doubt when functional connections with local authorities are lacking. The efficiency of peacekeeping missions is frequently dependent on collaboration and cooperation between United Nations soldiers and local governing systems. When these ties are strained or missing, missions may struggle to achieve their intended goals, jeopardizing the safety and security of the very populations they are supposed to protect. The performance of United Nations peacekeepers has been criticized for failing to intervene effectively in critical situations. According to a 2014 UN internal study, peacekeepers worldwide responded to only one out of every five situations where civilians faced imminent danger. This lack of proactive response was accompanied by a regular unwillingness to use force, even in life-threatening situations. According to an internal study conducted in 2021, the issue extended to the perceived ethics and integrity of peacekeeping personnel. This examination found poor levels of ethical conduct and integrity among peacekeepers, as well as a lack of accountability systems for dealing with misconduct within their ranks. While the frequency of UN investigations into such charges has increased in recent years, few have resulted in prosecutions.
Aside from ethical and accountability difficulties, critics argue that peacekeeping missions have a large cost to effectiveness in balance. These missions are mostly supported financially by a small group of big contributors. Notably, the Trump administration capped yearly U.S. payments to UN peacekeeping and lobbied for large reductions in major operations in Africa. Furthermore, there is significant worry about the veto power exercised by the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. This power can be used to postpone or weaken the mandates of peacekeeping forces, as seen in Sudan's Darfur region. The concept that countries who contribute significantly to UN peacekeeping deployments gain the biggest advantages has aroused concerns. These benefits, it is believed, go beyond simply achieving long-term peace within their boundaries. Instead, there is a notion that this assistance delivers hidden advantages, such as resource exploitation and other concealed political and economic gains. When looking at the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the MONUSCO mission, which was initially meant to oversee the peace process during the Second Congo War, later widened its scope to address several conflicts, including the Ituri, Kivu, and Dongo Wars. MONUSCO was previously known as the United Nations Mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The United Nations allowed the deployment of up to 90 human peacekeeping officers in the 1990s, a figure that has now risen to almost 20,000. This significant increase in officer numbers reflects the United Nations' strategic endeavor to exert authority over the country. On September 3, 1999, the first liaison officers arrived in the DRC, and by November 1999, there were 55 liaison officers stationed across the capitals of warring nations, with 24 based in Kinshasa. Their duty included liaison with warring factions, technical aid, and planning for the deployment of military observers. In the year 2000, UN Security Council Resolution 1291 allowed the deployment of up to 5,537 military personnel, including 500 military observers, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. On April 4, 2000, Senegal's Major General Montega Diallo was appointed as the leader of MONESCO's military force. The mandate included monitoring the ceasefire agreement, formulating an action plan for its full implementation, negotiating prisoner releases and humanitarian aid with parties, and maintaining the security of United Nations employees and facilities. International commitments must be established on the ideals of the United Nations Charter, which should emphasize individual well-being over the preservation of state sovereignty. The traditional structure for peace operations normally includes responsibilities like as mediation, ceasefire monitoring, and peace agreement enforcement. However, missions in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Mali, and the Central African Republic deviate greatly from this standard paradigm. Notably, some missions operate without the host country's permission and do not aggressively promote diversity. As a result, there is anger not only between the host country and UN soldiers, but also between the local populace and these multinational forces. Because the government and international forces do not share the same goals, this misalignment of objectives provides significant obstacles in combating terrorism and insurgencies. After more than 25 years in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, UN forces made just a minor contribution. However, when compared to the enormous human rights violations, resource exploitation, and unlawful activities they engaged in, it is clear that their presence was a complete waste of time. The President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo stated unequivocally that expecting MONUSCO to provide stability and peace to the country is unproductive. He highlighted that the moment has come for African nations to take charge and actively handle their own problems. This decision is based on a long-held observation that MONUSCO, led by Western powers, has squandered time in Congo with little result. Almost all African nations have realized that these missions were nothing more than a mirage. However, after over two decades of constant presence, the situation has deteriorated. Despite MONESCO's continued presence, the number of armed organizations in the region has increased, people continue to face risky circumstances, and innocent lives are cruelly lost. Initially, the mission was burdened with the critical responsibility of preventing such tragic scenarios. Regrettably, it has failed to successfully carry out its mandate, proving useless in the end. 
The rising violence has prompted a large number of people to flee to other countries, highlighting the mission's inadequacy to protect the region. Local communities frequently have tense relationships with MONESCO because they believe the mission has failed to appropriately safeguard them. MONESCO resorted to harsh tactics in response to the demonstrators' demands. Tragically, protesters have been hurt and died as a result of these protests, which have been driven by continuous security concerns and the notion that MONESCO should have anticipated and addressed this disturbance without incurring casualties. However, plans to remove MONESCO have been implemented, with the final evacuation set to begin in December of this year. This topic raises an important and difficult issue concerning the presence of United Nations forces in African countries. The issue over whether these peacekeepers should be expelled illustrates a complex interplay of factors ranging from mission success to the impact on sovereignty. It also reflects a growing feeling inside Africa, implying that it may be time for African countries to chart their own path in terms of peace and security. The presence and performance of United Nations forces has long been questioned. Critics have voiced concerns about the success of these missions over the years, claiming that they frequently fall short of their core aims, which include protecting civilians and promoting peace. Instead, troops have been accused of human rights violations, illegal operations, and resource exploitation, further complicating the situation. In reaction to these flaws and growing unhappiness among local populations, several African countries, such as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, have chosen a different path. The decision to evacuate United Nations soldiers from their country represents a shift in how African countries view their reliance on external forces for peace and stability. This action could herald a new age in which they opt to address their security concerns on their own. The concept of African states establishing their own peacekeeping and security agencies is not new. The African Union and regional organizations have become increasingly involved in resolving crises on the continent. This trend reflects a growing feeling of self-determination and a willingness to customize security efforts to the specific situation of each region. Finally, the topic of whether African governments should evacuate United Nations peacekeepers is complicated. It includes concerns about sovereignty, self-determination, and the effectiveness of international operations. It is part of a larger discussion about African countries' ability to solve security concerns autonomously and in ways that are consistent with their own needs and aims. The ongoing debate will almost certainly affect the future of African peacekeeping efforts as well as the larger dynamics of international intervention on the continent. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see our content.